Today we're going to check out the Wham Bam Hotbox Collapsible 3D Printing Enclosure. Wham Bam has put together this semi-rigid enclosure that's designed to set over the top of your 3D printer. It has a couple of different features like flaps on the top to allow for a little taller spool holder like on the Ender 3. And this front flap that's see-through, you can open it and hook it to the top of the enclosure in case you want to work on your machine. But why would you want an enclosure? Well, they're really handy if you're using plastic like ABS or ASA. When using those little higher temp plastics, they tend to want to shrink as you print them. And if they cool too quickly, you're more than likely going to get layer separation. And that's where the enclosure comes in. It should keep the drafts off of your print and keep the warm air in so they cool a little slower so you don't see that separation. Now, I do print a lot of ABS and ASA, but currently I use a lac table enclosure. So this is my Prusa version 1 lac table enclosure. It was designed around a Prusa printer, so you can't fit taller machines in it. You could alter it a bit if you wanted to put an Ender 3 in here, but I mainly use it for my Prusa Mark II. Now there's a couple of drawbacks to the lac enclosures. One, lac tables really aren't all that sturdy. You have to mess around with them a bit to get them level and make sure they don't wobble. Two, the lac tables are also semi-hollow. They're kind of filled with a cardboard honeycomb material, and that causes the noise from the printer to kind of resonate. So it really doesn't quiet down the printer at all. Also, with the acrylic sheets that you use for this design, unless you come up with some kind of seal around the edge, you're never really going to be able to keep a lot of that warm air in. It's enough to print ABS and ASA, but it could be just a little bit tighter. Not to mention, you're going to have to find a spot where you can set that enclosure up, and they're really not all that easy to move around. Now, if you're using a riprap style 3D printer, it's probably going to have some 3D printed parts on it. And you want to be careful using those inside an enclosure. You don't want to get anywhere near to melting those parts, or that's going to end badly. Now, with a passive enclosure, one without a heater, like the LAC enclosure or the hotbox, you probably don't have to worry about that so much, but it is going to vary from your environment to mine, so just be careful and watch it really closely, especially on longer prints. Now, there is one big feature of the hotbox that I really like, and that's the fact that you can tear it down, move it around from printer to printer fairly easily. So let's go through that real quick. And that's probably not the proper way to fold it up, but you get the gist. And now you can store it wherever you want, and it doesn't take up a lot of room. But let's put it back together and look at a couple of the features. Like I said before, you have this flap on front that you can open up. It's held on by Velcro. You can attach it up here on the top if you need to work on your 3D printer. There's also a pass-through on all three sides for your power cord or your USB cable if you need one. And if we move to the top of the enclosure, we have a thermometer down here that goes through to the inside, so you can kind of get an idea of what the top of the internal temp is like. We have flaps here in the center. Again, you can allow for a taller spool holder if you have one. And then we have a flap over here with a port, so you can add filtration if you'd like to. You also have several eyelets around this enclosure. They come with these little rubber caps so you can cap them and keep some of the heat in, but this allows you to pass through the filament and it'll have a nice smooth edge to ride on. You've got one here on the top, you got one here on the left side, one on the right side, which is the one I chose to use, and then a handful here in the back. And this is mainly for if you wanted to use something like the MMU2. So you'd have five paths for all those tubes to come in. So let's say we were going to use this enclosure to print something like ABS. How does it perform versus something like a LAC enclosure? Well, I did some time-lapse comparisons, so let's take a look at those. So both of the bed temps came up to temp at about the same time. I was testing at 100 C in both enclosures, so that's not really a surprise. Now the room temp was around 18 C, so it's fairly cool here in the basement, but you can see how much higher the hotbox temperature gets versus the LAC enclosure. I let both printers heat the bed at 100 C as long as I didn't see the temperature increase. The LAC enclosure, while it wasn't printing, topped out around 24.1 C, while the hotbox continued to heat for hours. I got it all the way to 33.1. Now, while they were printing, the LAC enclosure did jump up a couple of degrees, a little bit over 26 C, and so did the hotbox. I saw the thermometer a little bit over 36 C. And this is what the top thermometer looked like on the hotbox enclosure while it was printing. 
it was reading quite a bit cooler than the thermometer that was closer to the bed. Now with a really long print, 19 or 20 hours, printing ASA with a 110C bed, I have seen this top thermometer get up to 35C, which is pretty warm. The highest I've ever seen my LAC enclosure was around 32. Now all the tests that I did, I was using a generic ABS with a 255C hot end and a 110C bed. All of the test models I did, I did one without the enclosure, one with the lag enclosure, and one with the hot box. These three tests, the ones you saw in the time lapse, pretty much all turned out identical. That's because on this model, there really isn't anything on it that's going to cause you issues if it cools too quickly. Here's a high res pic of what those look like side by side. The only real difference I noticed was the one that was in the hot box, the bridging tests were quite a bit better. And then there's another test I like to do when I'm printing ABS, and that's these little boxes that I created. There's a lot of plastic on the bottom base of the box, and then the walls are really thin. And they can be kind of tricky to get right with ABS because of those thin walls cool pretty quickly. And they can also be pretty handy after the test because you can use them for nuts and bolts. So let's take a look at how those came out. So this is without an enclosure. You can definitely see the spots. They're pretty obvious where it cooled too quick, and the layers split. You can see the walls are pretty thin, but that bottom's pretty thick, and it's going to retain some heat. There's almost no layer adhesion on this model at all. You could just pull it apart. And these are the two boxes that I did inside the enclosures. This is the LAC enclosure. This is the hot box enclosure. And even though the hot box did get a little bit warmer inside while the print was going on, it really didn't make that much of a difference. The LAC model is pretty much just as good as the hot box. So as far as passive ABS printing, probably both those enclosures are going to be good enough, depending on what you're printing. But again, these do have pretty thin walls, and could be pretty tough to print in ABS altogether. So I really do like the Wham Bam Hotbox enclosure. I like its versatility, I can move it from printer to printer if I want to, and in just two zippers, I can collapse it and store it away when I'm not using it. Also, it's just a little bit tighter than my LAC enclosure. I can get to just a little bit higher temp, so maybe I could use it on other plastics, like polycarbonate. Also, it's a nice size, especially for i3 machines. So the enclosure is 568 by 568 by 484 millimeters. So it is a pretty nice size. You can get some of the taller i3 machines in here, including the Ender 3, which is quite a bit taller than a Prusa-style machine. There are a couple of modifications I'm going to look at making for this enclosure. The first one being a light for the inside. Once your printer's in there, it is pretty dark and it's really hard to see what's going on. And on top of that, maybe some sort of pocket or mount for a webcam so we can do some active monitoring. I really would have liked to seen a bottom on this enclosure as well, one that zipped up. That would really increase the functionality. You wouldn't have to worry about so much where you were printing. You don't have to completely seal the bottom with some sort of surface. Also, there is the price. It is $119 US. But compare that to a LAC enclosure when you have to buy the tables, the acrylic, the hardware, and print all the parts. You're probably looking at around $90 US, so they're really not that far apart from each other. Just given the fact that you can unzip this, collapse it, and close it, and then pull it out later when you need it, makes it a really handy thing to have around. This enclosure was provided by Wham Bam free of charge. All opinions expressed are my own and no money has changed hands. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.